In today's show, we're going to look back at an absolutely massive 11 game Wednesday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Download the app and join me on Fridays to get in on the action. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. All right, we've got lots of stuff to talk about. 11 games on Monday, but quickly some news here on John Wall, who's done for the season with a hamstring strain. We always had the feeling that something was going to happen. It wasn't his knee in the end, but it was his hamstring that ended the year. A lot of people are asking, who's the pickup there, Josh? I'm not convinced that anyone becomes an automatic must roster. You make sure that Wood, Olenek, Tate, and Cousin Kev Porter are rostered. If they're, they're not, they're the guys that you add. Then Eric Gordon is still out. Sterling Brown is still out. Avery Bradley might start in place of Wall. Armani Brooks might start in place of Wall. DJ Augustin will get more minutes later on in the season. It's just going to be, I think, a mishmash between yeah, House, Gordon Brown, Bradley, Martin, Waba, Brooks, Augustin, Wilson. All those sort of guys will get a mishmash of minutes. And I don't think any of them are must-roster players. It obviously means that you drop John Wall, but it means that those other four blokes, Wood, Linux, Tate, and Porter, get a real boost in their value rather than some random guy who's not rostered coming in and really stepping up. Maybe it's Eric Gordon if he eventually returns, but I don't see Brooks becoming a 12-team staple and definitely not Avery Bradley. Yeah, probably not DJ Orson, although they could go and start with him there as well. So I don't think it really makes there be any sort of real uh, must-roster type player in that scenario. Let's now look at the games. And we had some carnage again on Monday. Let's look at the games from Monday. The first one of those games is the Atlanta Hawks and the Detroit Pistons. Got a bit of a spicy feeling happening coming up in today's game. So let's see what happens. The Hawks. No Trey Young, of course. Then Lou Williams was out with an illness. So they did to start they did decide to start Brandon Goodwin. He played 28 minutes before he went off with look a pretty ugly looking ankle injury. Now he shot horribly, six points on 21%, but the seven assists were nice. I would have to assume that he's going to miss time. There is no update on him. He left the court in a wheelchair. Um, and that's not ideal. I don't think they're going to start Lou Williams. I think that they will just go back and start Bogdan Bogdanovich at point guard. I think this means some extra minutes for Skylar Mays, for those of you in very deep leagues. And no, I don't think that they'll just throw Chris Dunn in there. A, I don't think Chris Dunn's a point guard. And B, Chris Dunn's played his first game today after you know eight months off. I don't think he's going to be ready for those minutes. Now, Dunn played 13 minutes today. In true Chris Dunn style, he had a steal and a block, which is great. He also went 0 of 5 from the field for zero points and one rebound with zero assists. He is, if he can crank into 20 plus minutes, he can be a steals specialist, but I am not looking at him at this point as a must roster 12 team league guy. Kevin Herter also hurt his shoulder in this game. 15 points in 27 minutes for Fanta Pants with two steals and two assists, but he looks like he's all right. While Bogdanovich had 17, 7, and 5, and Johnny Collins 14 and 8 in 27 minutes in what was a pretty comfortable uh, loss. For the Hawks. The Italian cock had 12 and 12 in his 24 minutes. Hands off my cock! Um, look, he can be a 12-team league guy. I wouldn't say that he's guaranteed to be a must-roster player, but there's enough value there. While Capello was pretty inefficient, 38% for 12 and 15 and a block, but obviously just a, a weird, weird night for the Hawks. They were just uh, pretty poor in this game overall. For the Pistons, speaking of pretty poor, um, I, I don't know. No, they won. That's great. They didn't need to win. There's absolutely no benefit in them winning this game. But I'll just, I'll never understand the decision-making of Dwayne Casey. So Josh Jackson was ruled out. So you got an opportunity to put Corey Joseph at the two and start Killian Hayes. But instead, you decide to go with a backcourt of Corey Joseph and Wayne Ellington. Why? And I don't give a shit that Corey Joseph played 22 minutes I don't give a shit that Wayne Allington played only 23 and that Hayes got 23 off the bench. I don't care about that. Start Frank Jackson. Just play the guys you need to develop more minutes. It's a simple equation. And now now I I can be critical of Casey, and I have been for almost every year this podcast has been in existence. But where's the logic? 
So Mason Plumlee, the last two games, let's go back two weeks, he'd start, he'd play like 17 minutes, Isaiah Stewart would come in and play 28, and you go, all right, fire it up. Plumlee's going to rest games, Stewart's going to come in, and he's going to play you know, 32 on the nights that Plumlee's out, and then 25 to 26 other nights. It's great. It's an ad. And then Plumlee comes back and plays 32 and 30 minutes, and Stewart gets 17 minutes. Like, out of nowhere. And you go, what is this bullshit? And then today, Plumlee starts, has zero fouls, and plays 21 minutes. Look, where's the consistency? Where's the logic? Why did we have two games where Plumlee played 30-plus minutes? Like, why? What's the necessity for it? 10, 7, and 3 for Plumlee. Like, that's fine, but there's no consistency with any of this messaging. Killian Hayes had two points. That's not great. Five assists, three steals. That is good. That's really good. But how's the dude going to learn? Like, put him in a position with, you know who he needs to play with? Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart. Probably Josh Jackson. These are the guys he's going to develop with. Like, play them together. Why do, what? I don't understand any of this shit that, that Dwayne Casey's doing. And he got the win. It, it means nothing. And I've said this a lot of times too. If his coaching position is predicated on wins that he gets, kids, is then the organization could go fuck themselves because that's not what this team's designed to do. If they go to Dwayne Casey and say, you didn't win enough games, like, are you, are you joking? Are you kidding yourself? There's got to be synergy here. None of it makes sense. But shout out to the Pistons for a good win. Awesome. Jeremy Grant was on the uh, underperforming show today and he continued to underperform, 18-4. and four. Can't rebound at the moment. Defensive stats are down. Efficiency is, who knows, stuck up his ass somewhere. I don't know what's going on. 40% from the field, 71 from the line. As I posited on today's show, maybe he isn't a guy that can handle the load of being a number one offensive option. And that six weeks or two months to begin the season was a complete mirage. Again, I don't really know what to make of where this team is headed in terms... Oh, actually, quick quick positive note. Uh, Frank Jackson, 18 points with three threes. He's been really good. Now, he can't do anything else apart from score. Can't pass, not a good defender. Like He's a good scorer, and there's, a, there's value in that. I didn't even talk about Alf Stewart. I've got to talk about him. 4-11 and 11 in 27 minutes for Alf with four blocks. Like, this is awesome. This is why I said, you know, we want to hold him. And then, then I, lost, I lost hope. I was like, mate, I don't know what to do here. So they're going to play him 17 minutes a night. There's no value in it. But now you've got to make sure he's on a roster because they have a five-game week next week. And if he's going to play 27 a night or even 25 a night, we plumbly start and then hell yeah. The depressed penis had 11 and 8 with three threes. Again, just he's just thoroughly average. And that, that can be fine in the fantasy playoffs where you need some sort of level of guaranteed production. This episode is brought to you by Locker Room, the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download, and on Android, there is beta, uh, beta version available, so you can go download over there. And once you're in on Locker Room, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll be hosting a room for Locked On Fantasy on Friday, so make sure you're checking it out and following me there. It is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the NBA, and you'll find fans just like you on Locker Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to big news or rumors. Be sure to join me this week on Friday and, uh, and have a chat about fantasy basketball. Go download the free Locker Room app now, currently available on iOS devices and, again, some beta options on Android. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the NBA group for the latest league updates. Follow me at joshlloyd48 to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss. I'm planning to be live on Friday this week, and I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on, our, on your fantasy basketball playoffs. See you there. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. Not great when the first game you talk about goes for five minutes. Could be a long one. All right, let's go. Next one, the Spurs and the Washington Wizards, 146-143. <sighs> Maximum Derek. Derek White goes down with what looks like a relatively significant ankle injury. He played 19 minutes and had nine points. He had to be carried off the court, and Popovich's only comments was, it doesn't look good. I, you know, I think Derek White's a good player. We saw him firing up at the moment, you know, top 50 over the last week, but you would have to assume that the week is done for White. I would have to assume that this is minimum 10 days, but that's based on just how it looked, the fact that he was carried off, and Popovich's comments. No official diagnosis, so nothing I say here is official. I think you've got to consider, again, you've got to be ruthless. As much as I love Derek White, you've got to be ruthless, and you might have to drop him. Now, they might come out and say, actually, you know what? He's all right. He's fine, and he's going to play in the next game, and I'm going to go... You know what, kids? Just don't listen to this whole episode. It's simple, simple. Um, I'm just going to say, well, fuck, I got it wrong. Like that, that's that's what it's going to be like. But I think if we have to look um, at how he 
how how all those factors play in. And often you need to be making moves early in fantasy rather than waiting to see what happens. Um, you can consider it. But let, let's throw the flip side out there. The Spurs, they don't play Tuesday, so you don't miss out on a game there. They play again on Wednesday, which is a more high-volume day. So, you know, if he is in fact injured and doesn't play Wednesday and only misses the one game, then maybe you can afford to hold for more info. Did, and then let's go flip flip side again. But if he's probably not going to play Wednesday and you have the opportunity to get an extra play win on Tuesday and a low volume day and an extra play win on Thursday on a low volume day, then maybe you do make that move. Personally, even though I love the bloke, I would be ready to make a move and say, I think he's done for two weeks. That's my estimation based on, again, your yeah, armchair doctoring with some level of, you know, following sports for bloody forever and also having a medical background that I reckon he might be in trouble for the next couple of weeks. Um, but of course, I'm looking at it from a million miles away. And I know I'm talking a lot about Derek White's ankle here, but it's, it's a key thing. And I do think that you can look at him as a, a potential drop option here. DeJounte Murray, he took the advice of the uh, underachieving players show and went 25, 17, and 5 with three steals. Awesome. DeRozan had 32 with 10 assists, which is also great. Well, Keldon Johnson, 38 minutes. I think he's going to be a beneficiary from White going down. 21 points. His last couple of games have been better, for sure. He is at least a speculative type ad. I wouldn't say that he's a must roster, but he's a speculative ad. Let me tell you who isn't an ad. Lonnie Walker. Now, he will start with Derek White out, most likely. He shouldn't, but he will. He's not good. He's not a good fantasy player. He's played 25 minutes a night this year, and he's ranked 281st. You do not add him in 12 or 14-point leagues. 14-team leagues, sorry. Paddy Mills, maybe. 11 points, three threes, four assists. At least if you need points and threes, Mills is going to be a stream option for you. But again, they play Wednesday. Do you need someone to fill a roster spot Wednesday? Then maybe don't worry about it. Rudy Gay had 17 points in just the 20 minutes. He can be always a stream option for 12s, so probably more suited to 14-team leagues. On to the Wizards. Westbrook triple double. What a shock that is. 22, 13, and 14. He also shot a horrendous 35% from the field. What a shock as well. But nice free throws. Hit all four of them. And Beal had 45 points with no threes somehow. Three rebounds, one assist, and no steals or no blocks. So a very empty line, but 45 points on 54%. You'll always take that. Now, Scott Brooks. Brooksy. Scotty, what are you doing? That's a simple question. You're not, you're not listening to this. This isn't a Zoom call with the coaches. If I was on a Zoom call with the coaches, I reckon I wouldn't get invited back. But Scott, what are you doing? Dan Gafford, 27 minutes last game, four steals, four blocks, dominates. Robin Lopez goes down. He's like, all right, boys, let's fire up. And then he plays 15 minutes in an overtime game. He did have some foul trouble, to be fair to Brooks. And you think he had two fouls in the first seven minutes. And that is, that is fair enough. But 15 minutes is just not enough. I am still holding Gafford because maybe it is just that foul problem that kept those minutes down. Six and four with two blocks. Still had two blocks. But it's frustrating as shit to see that sort of thing go on. Alex Len, 17 and 10. Now, Len's a guy that when he's got minutes in the past, he has produced. So if Lopez remains out, Maybe there's something there. Probably not, though. Rui Hachimura had a triple one. He had 13 and six. He shot 71%, but I don't view him as anything more than a streamer at this point. While Bertans had 13 points with two blocks as well. So getting two blocks out of him is always a uh, sheaf. What are we, what are we talk, talking about? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. 26 minutes of Ish Smith is always unnecessary, but he had eight assists while Neto had six and four in 25. I still think Neto can be a 12-team league option, but that is obviously not a particularly good line over there for Big uh, big Hole. Let us go. Next game. We're talking Lakers magic. Lakers win at 114-103. Montrezl Harrell back in the rotation. Huge usage role here. 23 minutes, 18 and 5 with three steals. Now, he has been bad of late. He's been playing under 20 minutes in most games. But in a matchup that was a little bit easier, uh, they gave him those extra minutes. I, I, I view him more as a streamer rather than a must-roster player for 12-team formats. Drummond played 25 minutes, had 13 and 11 with two blocks. Yeah, nice enough production for Drummo. Well, Anthony Davis, the minutes restriction is done, apparently. 31 minutes, 18 and 8. That's still quite underwhelming. Like, it's fine, but it's just, it's underwhelming. It's not good. I mean, it's not great. It's good. Schroeder was good. He was great, actually. 21 points, 10 assists in 38 minutes. While Kuzma, I think he can drop Kuz, 14 and 7 with four threes. And KCP had 10 points. He'd been putting up top 75 value over the last two weeks. Um... 
big KCP, but I don't really think that he is anything more than a steals and three streamer. He had two of each here. Horton Tuck is a clear drop, 16 minutes for four points, while Macklemore getting minutes over Wes Matthews continues to baffle the shit out of me. For the Magic, um, Wendell Carter Jr. came into this game on a minutes restriction because of an ankle injury, hurt his ankle again, went to the locker room, and then magically came back. Now I put a tweet out today saying when he went to the locker room, I go, hey, guys, make sure when, uh, Mo Bumba's not on your wire. And then yeah, people added him. And then they got pissed when Mendo Carter came. Josh, you cost me. You cost me an ad. But do you, you understand, right? Maybe you don't. I think most of you do. Do you have to make those calls? You have to make those decisions, right? You have to add Bumba. Because if you don't, and then Carter is ruled out for the game. And again, when they have to uh, commit a foul to get him out of the game to get into the locker room, when he's already dealing with an ankle injury, you try and weigh everything as a probability. There's no guarantees really in anything, apart from Scott Brooks fucking things up. There's no guarantee really for, for most things. But when you add together the idea of, dude's got a sore ankle, dude hurt his ankle again, they had to commit a foul to get him out of there to get to see what was going on, and then you know his backup is a really big high, high fantasy point per minute or high fantasy production per minute player, then you just go and add him and you make sure you've got him. Maybe it costs you an ad. That's fine. But Bumba, even in 19 minutes, had six and seven with two blocks. You know what? That's still good. That's still 12-team worthy. And if they play, and last game, Carter played, what, 22 minutes and Bumba played 25 minutes? You just make sure he's there. You make sure you got him. And it's, it's not horrendous advice. It's not, what a terrible decision you cost me. You, you have the power to choose or, or not to listen to what I say. But to me... If that's me, I make that move. I make that decision. To me, we're looking at probabilities. That's a 70%, 80% chance of working out. It doesn't work out, oh, well. You have to take those risks. Unless you're just going to sit on your ass and not do anything at any point until someone gets, oh, I'll wait till he's ruled out for the next three weeks before I make a move. You're going to be too late in a competitive league. Like If you know your league doesn't pay attention or give a shit, then sure, wait. But bummer has got value anyway. Even in 19 minutes over the last two weeks, he's 130th ranked player. That's fine. Jumra Kiki, 18 points in 31 minutes, two steals and three threes. We talked about how bad his shooting's been. He shot 58% here, so good for him. I still look at him more as a steals type streamer rather than a must roster player. Cole Anthony was good, must roster clearly. 15, 4, and 7. Well, Gaz Harris had 17 points. Unfortunately, he shot 25%, but good bulk scoring, not a 12 teamer. Wendell had 10 and 8, I will hold, but I think there is a worry that he can. Um, Maybe that swells up and he misses more time. Just worry about that one. Well, the sharp Dwayne Bacon started, played 37 minutes, and how he can still remain the 319th ranked player despite playing 25 minutes a game is astonishing. 13 points, zero threes, one rebound, two assists, no steals, no block. Now, if in a situation where Ross Porter, Carter Williams, and Ennis are all out, and when Bacon is going to start and he's know he's going to take shots. If you need points at a desper desperation type level, then sure, he can provide points. But his overall fantasy contribution is so bad that it needs to be very specialized in very specific situations. Because I think if Ross, Porter, Carter Williams, and Ennis all play, yeah, he's not playing. Yeah, Ch Chase and Randall and Robbie Franks aren't playing, but who else is out of that rotation? RJ Hampton? I don't think he plays every night. I know Steve Clifford loves him. No idea why. Um, but yeah, he's not an ad unless you're in an 80-team league. And that's hyperbole. Maybe we'll go with 20-team league. And even then, you know what? Even in a 20-team league, I think you can do better, which is absolutely an amazing statement to say. Rock Auto is also an amazing statement to say. I love Rock Auto because you can go into your local chain store and you can just spend all your money. Like, why would you bother doing that? And the bloke has to order your parts. Like, oh, he's going to type on your computer. Have you got fingers? Have you got a keyboard? You can type on your computer as well because rockauto.com is a family business serving, serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and it's remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices you prefer. Best of all, the prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and they are the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing, and you can track all of the action at Bet Online. And this week has tons of sports action on the go. The NFL draft is on, the Kentucky Derby 
Did you say Derby or Derby? I don't, what, I don't know what you guys say. I am get so confused. Anyway, the Kentucky Derby is back as the first leg of the Triple Crown begins this weekend. Get all the news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC, MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all of the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their run to the playoffs in the NBA and the NHL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using our promo code Locked On. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. Okay, next game. We're getting through them eventually. The Thunder and the Sixers. Philadelphia wins it easily, 121 to 90. I don't think anybody really doubted that they would get the victory, but they win it pretty, um, win it pretty easily in the end. Ty Jerome stepped up, 31 minutes for the Thunder. 22 points with four threes. He always threatens this. You go, well, maybe he's tied to Rome, maybe. And then he'll play 18 minutes. So it is hard to really judge where he sits moving forward. I think he's more of a 12-team league streamer and a 16-team must add. Isaiah Roby, I think, is a 12-team. And he only played 21 minutes, which is frustrating. He had four fouls. But seven, eight, and four, two steals and a block. And he shot 22%. So that line could have been a lot better. The C part, I played 27 minutes. Moses Brown, 11 and eight, which is totally fine. There was no Tony Bradley in this game. Remember that. Brown was still four games this week. You can get value out of him just by squeezing that extra playing time. While Baisley had 14 and 7 in what was a pretty disappointing game, which, you know, that's been the modus operandi of Baisley all season. Just disappoint us. He's more of a streamer, I think, for points. But again, this week, you want to roster him. The Salt Flake, Theo Maladon, had 10 points with two steals in 22 minutes and actually shot the ball well. While Pokyshevsky had just the eight points, but five assists and two steals. We know that his field goal percentage is rough. It's going to remain rough, but his ability to get assists and steals and usually blocks keeps him in the conversation. Kenrich Williams started with Dort out. He had eight points, whilst Fima Luke had two points in 24 minutes. Even though they've got four more games left, I wouldn't be looking super excitedly at those blokes. For Philadelphia, Benny Simmons returned from illness, 12, 3, and 4, three steals and two blocks. It's just good to have him back. Embiid had 21 and 5 with three steals. And the thick hogsman, Tobias Harris. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Yeah, TH for life indeed. He had 11, 4, and 4 with four steals in a limited role because they didn't need to do much. They were able to extend this bench all the way out. Mason Jones plays six minutes. Shout out to you if you knew that Mason Jones was on this team. I want to highlight this bloke though. Paul Reed. 10 minutes, 10 points, nine rebounds, one steal, two blocks. This dude, his fantasy translations from college looked amazing. His G League numbers were awesome. In extended minutes here, awesome. Just watch. If there are games where we get yeah, multiple players sitting. Mid to mid May, last week of the season, Paul Reed plays 30 minutes. He'll blow up. Almost can guarantee that he will blow up. Really good option. Really, really good option for fantasy stats. Furky from Turkey had 10 points in his 21 minutes. All right, let's go on to the next game now. The Cavs lose to the Raptors 112-96. For Cleveland, there was no Colin Sexton. There was no Larry Nance, who's out for the next you know, couple of weeks with a thumb injury. That is a clear, clear drop scenario. Isaiah Hartenstein was out with a concussion. Melly Dellavedova was out with a neck strain. Lamar Stevens was out with a concussion. Mate, everyone was out in this game. The discman, Chetty Osman, six points on 22% shooting, but he's filling it up. Five rebounds, four assists, three steals, and a block. He's at least worth streaming for the short term. Garland, 13 points on 39%. Pretty rough there, but the 10 assists are nice. And Jarrett Allen had 15 and 7. And Kevin Love, he was just not interested. 11, 7, and 4 in 24 minutes. I would have I tweeted this clip out. You would have seen it, I'm sure, of the ref throwing the ball to Love on a baseline uh, out-of-bounds play. And the ref throws the ball back. And Love just punches it back at the ref. And it, like that obviously counts as you know, him inbounding the ball. He doesn't even go after it. The Raptors just pick it up and drill a three. It was one of the weirdest plays you'll see. He did not give a shit. 20 points from Isaac Okoro, but no assists, no steals, no blocks. He just, there's so many holes in his game fantasy-wise at the moment that maybe he can take a big step forward. And there are the building blocks there. He's getting a ton of minutes and a ton of experience, but fantasy-wise, it's been pretty disappointing from Isaac Okoro this season. For the Raptors, Malachi Flynn was excellent. 18, 5, and 5, two steals, two threes, 24 minutes. You could make the argument. In fact, rephrase that. I will make the argument. I think he's already a better player than Gary Trent. I don't, I don't particularly like Trent as an... I think he's a good shooter, Gary Trent, but he's too um, up and down in every other area. I think Flynn's a better player than him. Now, is there a chance that Flynn plays big minutes tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we don't know what the Raptors are going to do, but Larry and Van Vliet might be out. 
four more games this week. Um, but this is the great, the best opportunity to add Flynn is for Tuesday. Ken Birch, 14-6, two steals, two blocks. I'm sure he's been added everywhere. He needs to be added everywhere for this week. While well, Siakam has 25, 5, and 4 in the Jedi. OG and Anobi. But what about Scarfs? OG. Blizzard, stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Nah, his scarfs were fine in this one. 20 and 5 with a steal and a block. His ability to increase his usage of late has been super, super impressive. So really, really good um, to see that. Van Vliet, rough, 8, 5, and 6. Absolutely stunned if he plays tomorrow, to be fair. Well, Lowry can't shoot at the moment either. Nine points, five boards, and 10 assists for, for Kyle. Freddie Gillespie, he's just a desperation deep league type guy. Well, interestingly, that DeAndre Bembry, who was starting and playing minutes over Malachi Flynn earlier, only seven minutes in this one. Um, yeah, I, I, look, Boucher's not going to play this week. I think that Ananobi and Lowry are definite outs tomorrow. I think Van Vliet is definitely out tomorrow. Actually, I think Van Vliet is probably out. And I think Siakam has a chance of being out. So I'll be firing. Birch should be rostered, and I'll be firing up your Malachi Flynn's for Tuesday's game. Let's go on. Next one, the Phoenix Suns, the New York Knicks. The Suns win at 118-110. Good for the Suns, who'd lost a couple in a row, and the Knicks, who'd won a, a ton in a row. Um, they uh, unfortunately have to suffer that defeat. Chris Paul had 20.6 assists and two blocks with a great game on McCall Bridges. He does have some ups and downs for sure, um, but 21, four and three, two steals and three threes is, is really strong. DeAndre Ayton was invisible in this game. 10% usage, nine points. He still had 13 boards, but just really, really weird stuff to just completely go missing like that. While Booker had 33 points, unfortunately he shot just 67 from the line. There's always something with him at the moment where something just a bit off. 102nd ranked player of the last two weeks, 38 fantasy points here. Cameron Johnson had 11 points in 30 minutes with three threes with Jay Crowder out, but it was Tory Craig who started. Um, it, yeah, he played 18 minutes and had three points. This is what I said yesterday when he had that 20 point game. I go, don't overreact to Tory Craig. Look, nothing's going to come of it. And even though he started, even less came of it than I expected. Four and four for Frank the Tank. Cool, he's back in the rotation. I guess that's because Sharich and Crowder were both out. I thought Sharich was legit legitimately just resting yesterday, but it does not appear that is the case. Um, the Knicks, 45 minutes for Rowan Barrett. <laughs> Why? 17 points on 39% shooting, didn't take a free throw, didn't get a steal, didn't get a block, 17, four and two. I, I know Knicks fans like to think that I'm a hater. Man, what do you got to say about RJ Barrett now? Hey, look, the numbers, they, I, I think they just sort of speak for themselves for all of the improvements that he's made. And they've been significant. He's the 142nd ranked player this year. Look, that is, look, the scoring is fine, but when you've got just so many negatives in so many areas, it does make him at times a tough roster. I think we still hold on, but I believe the Knicks have two more games this week. If you need to max out games played, uh, may, maybe maybe you've got to move on because that you're not missing much as the 142nd best player. Noel was pretty poor, four points in 28 minutes, and Alfred Payton... The comical, I'm going to start you and not play you minutes is continues to be baffling as shit. Seven and four in 15 minutes. Nobody, surely nobody has Alfred Payton. You can drop him. While Quickly had 11, three and four. Quickly is turning into a guy where you can at least have some level of value in terms of his scoring and threes. But as a must roster, not there. Derek Rose, they're just pumping him full of minutes. 22 points in 33 minutes with six rebounds and six assists. Of course, there was no three steals or blocks, but that's not what you have Derek Rose for. Well, I've got to give another shout-out to Reggie Bullock, who had 17 points with four threes, really playing at a high level, and does have some 12-team league value with the way that the uh, injuries are currently going with no Alec Burks in there. Also, shout-out to six points in uh, 10 minutes for Obi Toppin, cause, mainly because I just want to play this. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. Thank you. All right, let's go on to our next game here. We've got the Chicago Bulls. They beat the Miami Heat. 110-102. Good win for the Bulls on the road. Vanilla Tice went off. 23-12-5 with two blocks. Can we rely upon that? Of course not. 51 fantasy points. That's awesome. But no, this is not who Daniel Tice is. He is a 14-team league option, but not a must roster 12. While Nikola Vucevic... It's Vucevic. 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 24-11. Two free throw attempts. That's better than what he's been doing. So good game there. While Thad Young saw his minutes increase up to 26, 10, 9, and 8. He's pretty solid. I find it so hard to get a read on where he's where he is at the moment and what his value is as we move forward. But that, that's solid enough. Kobe White must roster 17, 5, and 6. While Sadoransky is a nice assist streamer. He had 6 in 18 minutes. Larry Markin, they played him some small forward. Wouldn't say it was particularly great, but he was a plus nine. So 12 points in 23 minutes. But I'm not really entertaining him as a 12-team league fantasy option. And Pat Williams... 
is losing minutes. He is just a steal specialist. He is losing uh, minutes and value at the moment. Eight points in 22. For the Heat, Bam Adebayo up against uh, Big Vucevic. <laughs> Big meaty man slapping me. <laughs> yeah, they slapped their meat, all right. Bam had 23 and 6 with two steals and two blocks. Good game. Butler had 33, 8 and 5. And Trevor Ariza really filled it up. 18 and 6, four threes, two steals, two blocks. Absolute must roster 14 team league player, Ariza. Solid enough to be a 12 team league guy on the right schedule days, but not a must roster. He's a little bit up and down. There was no none. Oladipo or Hero. So Goran Dragic started. He had eight points. That's rough. But six rebounds, seven assists, and three steals. On days like this, you have Dragic as a 12-team league guy. And otherwise, he's not a must-roster guy. Well, Dunk Robinson, man, he had to leave this game due to illness. He was obviously not right. Three points on seven shots. As I've said almost since the first week of the season, he is not, in my opinion, a must-roster player. He is a specialist for threes, and that is it. And in points leagues, Jack Armstrong knows what to do. Get that garbage out! Thank you, Big Jack. Next game, the Utah Jazz. Two in a row to the Timberwolves, they lose? Okay. Mike Conley, 26, 9, 105, 104, the Wolves win it. 26, 9, and 7 for Conley, while Gobert had 18 and 5 with three blocks. So they're pretty good in numbers. Joe Ingles is struggling a little bit here. 10 points on 21% shooting with three threes. I still think that with Mitchell out, he does have 12 team value. Well, Bog- Boyan Bogdanovich, holy shit. I said, yeah, maybe Bogdanovich has turned it around. Uh, he shot 9%. 9.1 to be exact, 7 points. Now, he is a top 75 player over the last two weeks, including whatever this mangled turd of a game is. But, man, this just kills you. And he's been shit for the massive chunks of this season. Jordy Clarkson, 13, 4, and 8 with two steals is pretty solid. While George Niang, the minivan, has 14 and 5. And Royce O'Neal, 6, 10, and 4. O'Neal, again, it's not sexy what Royce does, but he does have 12-team league appeal. And you know, I'm not even including his low turnovers because I do not give a shit about that. It's these other numbers that are useful. The rebounding, the field goal percentage, hits some threes and gets some steals. That still does have value. Has D'Angelo Russell found his role as a bench player? 31 minutes, 27, 2 and 12, 7 triples. Now, before you come at me, it's disrespect, Josh. The coach is disrespecting him. An all-star coming off the bench. It's so offensive. Is it? Or is it just the, actually the best place for him and the team? So I think that that's probably the right answer. Great to see 31 minutes. The scoring's fine. He's been really good. Really good in this role. I love this role for him. Goose. Anthony Edwards. 38 minutes. Missed a shit ton of shots. That's what we expect. 29% shooting. Something has to be done with this guy in shot selection. Uh, I know he's a rookie. He's not figuring it out, but... I had similar concerns with his shot selection coming out of college and it hasn't really changed. 14, 9, and 4 on 29% shooting is rough. Uh, we love him. Love him as a bloke. The steals have been sensational. The, the volume's been good, but there is some real problems with what he does shot selection-wise. Townsie had 21 and 11. Well, Wancho got on fire here somehow. 14 points in 18 minutes and uh, the two blocks from Jaden McDaniels that's where his value is. That's where his stream value comes from. It would have been much better for Jaden because he shot only two of nine, and that could have been... You could have had a 12 and 10 double-double with two blocks, which would be awesome. Rubio had three steals and four assists, but only playing 22 minutes. That's the last two games where the numbers have been down. I think that does make him close to a droppable player, while Akogi had the eight points in 21 minutes. Rubio's value, again, he just ties into being a... Um, an assists streamer, but it is a little bit troubling to see those minutes come down that far because it, it does make it hard to... Um, to view him as uh, yeah, an absolute must-roster type of guy with the way that those minutes have uh, have trended in that direction. Let's go on to the next game. The Pelicans beat the Clippers uh, in the end pretty comfortably, 120-103. A couple of injury updates here. Nick Batum didn't play in the second half due to a shoulder problem, and Paul George hurt his ankle, only playing 25 minutes. Now, we don't know whether he's going to be ready to go, but he was poor, nine points in 27% shooting. He'd been absolutely rolling. He's the fourth-ranked player of the last two weeks. So I know people will have this, oh man, playoffs, even fantasy players, Paul George shits the bed. Really? He's the fourth ranked player over the last two weeks. That's fantasy playoffs. And he was awesome. He was bad here. There's no doubt about that. But he also hurt his ankle. Hopefully he's fine. Boogie Cousins, 25 minutes. 16 and 11 and two blocks. Am I adding Boogie Cousins? No. But they're good numbers. Well, Terrence Mann also stepped up with Batum and George out. Mann's a guy to watch if George has to miss time, 17 and four, but I wouldn't add him otherwise. Shit one from Reggie Jackson. In fact, it was just a shit one from the Clippers in general. Nine points in 20 minutes for Reggie Jackson with five assists, while Rondo added his five assists as well in his 22 minutes. And Marcus Morris had 15 and seven with two steals and a block. Just a really, really rough night. 
um, for the Clippers in general. For the Pelicans, Lonzo was great. 18, 9, and 7 with two steals. And big Bill Hernan Gomez. He started. He played 31 minutes. He had 12 and 10 with three steals and a block. And as long as Steven Adams is out, Bill Hernan Gomez has some value. Uh, Ingram only played 26 minutes. Again, blowout. 17, 7, and 5. While Zion, 30 minutes, 23 points. Unfortunately, he just massacred your free throws. 55% on 11 attempts. But the other numbers are all right. Najee Marshall, I reckon that runs probably over. Six, 7, 6, and 4. The minutes are there, but he's just never going to maintain, I don't think, that level of permanent production. While Eric Bledsoe finally turned it on. 18 points, 4 steals, 26 minutes. Do I believe that he's a must-roster player? No. But that's obviously a really good performance, and he can have at least some stream value. But I wouldn't be going, man, I've got to get Eric Bledsoe back on my team. Because again, the the body of evidence that we've had from him would suggest that this is a one-off, and then you'll go back to being shithouse in the next one. All right, let's go next game. The Denver Nuggets, they handily beat the Memphis Grizzlies 120-96. to Ja Morant continued his strong run of form, 27-6-6. and Unfortunately, he didn't hit any threes, but great efficiency across the board. While Dylan Brooks had nine points in 23 minutes, just a shit game in general. Jaron Jackson Jr., who'd been really good in his first two games back, struggled. 10 points on 30% shooting with seven uh, seven boards and zero blocks. He also had some uh, some foul issues, five fouls. The old Jaron Jackson foul trouble issue reared, it, reared its ugly head, which is unfortunate. And it was also a pretty bad night from DeAnthony Melton. 24 minutes, three points on 11% shooting with six rebounds. Um, yeah, look, very hard to have Melton as a must roster. I think Jaron, you probably do, but that's obviously not an ideal performance. Kyle Anderson, just the 19 minutes. I think he might trend to becoming a drop. I think Brandon Clark's a drop. Uh, Valanciunas, just the 13 and 3. But it is hard for me to read too much into this game because they were outclassed really early on. Grayson Allen also is a uh, is a 12-team league uh, jettison type player. Get that garbage out of here! For the Nuggets. Big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus. Nikola Jokic had 24, 15, and 5 with two steals. He was awesome, as was Maga Porter Jr., 31 and 7 with three threes. Porter is now a top 30 player over the last two weeks, and Faku had 7.7 assists and two steals. Kampazzo, I think, is a 12 team league option. It was also a much better performance from Aaron Gordon, but again, this continually happens is that when no, they just limit him at any opportunity, he played 22 minutes. Jokic played 30, Porter played 36, Kampazzo played 30. They don't play Gordon big minutes. Now, 15 and 5 and two assists is strong, 60% is great. I think he can be a usable player with Barton out, but I'm not convinced that he's must roster. Doja was rough, and he can have these rough shooting nights for sure. Nine points on 33%. Three rebounds, three assists, and a block. I think you can still persist with him as a 12-team league guy in the short term while Barton remains out. Rivers played a lot of minutes, but he is one of the worst per-minute fantasy production players in the league. Six points in 29 of them there. And Big Shaq Harrison, unfortunately, wasn't able to snag a steal for us. That's what we always want him to do, but he didn't do it. Paul Millsap played 14 minutes, had 12 points with two triples, but he is just a very, very deep league guy, and that is really about it for him. All right, so let's go on to the last game of the night. The Dallas Mavericks go down to the Sacramento Kings, 113-106. The Mavericks were without Joshy Richardson and Kristaps Porzingis. Porzingis. They made an interesting change at halftime. Started Trey Burke over Maxi Kleber. Now, Kleber was, was shit-house, really. Two points in 10 minutes. He's he's really not himself this year. Burke got unbelievably hot. 19 points in 28 minutes, five assists, two steals, and three threes. We've seen Burke's... Or not Burke. We've seen Burke have these hot streaks before, and it doesn't normally amount to anything. So I'm not looking at this and going, shit, Trey Burke, four more games this week. That's a must roster. I'm also not completely discounting that. I'm just looking at Tuesday where Doncic might be out, back-to-back, -back, resting, played 38 minutes today, Luca did, that maybe Burke gets a roll. But he could also just shit the bed completely. But it's not a bad flyer to consider. I think Dorian Finney-Smith is a strong ad, 10-7-4 and four with two steals and a block. Doncic had 24-7-8, and eight, but of course his percentages were pretty bad. His plus minus was also horrendous. Well, Willie Cauley-Stein was the big man who benefited. Dwight Powell played 13 minutes. Cauley-Stein played 27 and had 8-7 and seven with three steals and a block. But of course, Willie's value is really tied to Kristaps Porzingis and whether he plays. It was Hardaway who started in place of Richardson. He had 19 points in 29 minutes with three threes. He did nothing else. He took a ton of shots. He missed a lot of them as well. He can be a point streamer, but that's really about it. While Jalen Brunson really struggled, like playing poorly at the moment. Seven points in 18 minutes, but watch tomorrow. If Doncic is out, Brunson will start, I think, and will be a really good option in that scenario. But that is just one to watch. And if you want to take a flyer and take a educated guess that you might get 30 plus out of Brunson already, 
and do it before you hear the news. I, I think that there is a distinct chance of it happening. It's risky for sure, but there is a chance that, that happens. For the for the uh, Kings, Rashawn Holmes was on a 20-minute limit, so he played 26 minutes, had 24 and 6 with two blocks. He's actually really awesome, and uh, this means the end of Hassan Whiteside. Thank fuck for that. What's I didn't see the court at all. Chemezi Metu had nine points in 14 minutes while Damian Jones played 23 minutes. It's, it's too many minutes for Damian Jones, but here we are. And then DeLon Wright, 22 minutes. I thought we'd get more out of Wright. Uh, seven and six in 22. I still think that he's worth holding on to, but he's far from an absolute guarantee sort of player. The pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. 19 and 6 with three threes, but unfortunately he had to leave the game early due to an adductor issue. Let's hope that he doesn't miss too much time, but I would think he misses a little bit of playing time here. Core injuries are always tough to deal with. Buddy Heald had 16 and the uh, Taris Halliburton 14, 5, and 10 with three steals. Didn't shoot particularly well, but good to see him with this elevated role. Look, he should have been starting all year. We know that. Obviously, not in place of um not in place of Darren Fox but still should have been getting uh, these minutes and opportunities. So good to see him taking advantage of this chance that's been afforded of him due to the unfortunate scenario of Fox being out. All right, that'll do it for the recaps. Let's move on and have a look at the action or the top ads and drops over the last 24 hours. PJ Dozier up 49%. That obviously blew up in your face today, but I still think that's the right move. Roby up 19%, sure. Plumley up 14%. Well, who knows? I just don't know what they're going to do. He's only got two more games this week, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best decision. Ken Birch up 13. I love that. And then D-Line up 13. Again, it was the right choice, but we just got dicked around with it today. Drops. Bruce Brown down 17%. Sure. Jalen McDaniels down 17. That's fine. Evan Fournier down 11. Now, I think that I think you want to probably add Fournier with Tatum and Walker both out on Tuesday. I think there's actually value to stream him in on Tuesday. Shamat down 11. Yep, absolutely. And then Xavier Tillman down 9%. Clear drop player there. Top 10 players under 50% rostered. Daniel Tice had a big one today, but I don't expect that to be an ongoing thing. is a 14-team league guy. Malachi Flynn absolutely got some value for Tuesday for sure. And then Billy Hernan Gomez. For as long as Steven Adams is out, Hernan Gomez can be a 12-er. Ty Jerome is interesting, but ideally, or you know, in the end, the conclusion we come to, I think, is that he isn't the must-roster guy. Terrence Mann, if Paul George misses, I don't mind. Paul Reed, just watch him, keep an eye on him. Demarcus Cousins, only a deep league guy. Trey Burke, yeah, four, four games makes it enticing, but I'm, I'm not really convinced. And Alex Len, if Robin Lopez is out, then maybe Len can be an option for us. Let's look at DFS now for a six-game slate on Tuesday. All right, so we've got six games on on Tuesday. Let's look at it. FanDuel pricing. Portland and Indiana. DeMontis Sabonis is out. Goga Badadze and Jeremy Lamb are both questionable. Uh, for Portland, we don't have any injuries at this point. We assume, we hope, Yusuf Nurkic gets over 30 minutes, but we don't know that at this stage. The second one is the Bucks and the Hornets. The Bucks are nine-point favorites. The total is 220 and a half. Uh, PJ Tucker missed last game. It's questionable here. If he is out, it does help Bobby Portis's case. While for the Hornets, still no ball, Haywood or Monk, that all remains the same. The Thunder and the Celtics. The Celtics, 13 and a half point favorites. The total is 219 and a half. Now, I said on the What to Watch For show earlier, hey, just may maybe they're going to sit Kemba Walker. Um, in fact, yes, he's out. I didn't, didn't say that he'd already been ruled out, but he is out for this one. While OKC, back to back for them. Will Tony Bradley and Lou Dort return? Will they sit anybody else out? Also, Robbie Williams is questionable for the Celtics, so maybe he returns. I wouldn't expect him to be in and playing 26 minutes, though, in his first game. The Nets and the Raptors, who knows what's going to happen in this one. I know that Claxton is out and Alizé Johnson is out for Boss, uh, for Brooklyn, and James Harden is out, of course. I don't know who's going to start between Griffin and Jordan. That's something to watch. But for the Raptors, back-to-back. -back. So Ananobi probably out, Lowry probably out, Van Vliet, Siakam, not sure. So they could have big opportunities for Birch, for Flynn, Bembry perhaps. Siakam, if he's in and everyone else is out, Freddie Gillespie could have a big role. We know that Chris Boucher is going to be sidelined, but lots of interesting stuff. Well, Gary Trent's missed the last couple as well. Uh, sorry, missed, missed Monday's game. So Trent could be in for a relatively large role too. So just be aware of that one. The Minnesota Timberwolves and the Houston Rockets. We know John Wall is out for the season now. Kevin Porter is back. Christian Wood is back. Uh, Sterling Brown remains out. Daniel House is back. Well, do they start House at the two? Do they start Amani Brooks? Do they start Avery Bradley, who's back in this one too? So lots of different uh, configurations the Rockets can go with. The Wolves should be okay in terms of their injuries. Malik Beasley still remains out though. 
The Mavericks and the Warriors back-to-back here for Dallas. Don't be surprised if Doncic sits and Jalen Brunson gets a start. Porzingis didn't play on Monday, so he could be back here, but he could also sit out another game while the Warriors will have no Bazemore and no Damian Lee. But watch for the Mavericks. I think shenanigans may go on there. In terms of Fangio value at this point, yeah, Flynn looks all right, but Dadze, if he plays, I like Ken Birch, Jalen Brown with no Jason Tatum and Kemba Walker. Uh, Kevin Porter, Cousin Kev, looks great at 56. Pokishevsky at 41 looks all right. Uh, Yuta Watanabe, perhaps. Christian Wood. Bob Covington, maybe, but probably not. Marcus Smart, starting at point guard. Kelly Olynyk, Carl Anthony Towns, Devontae Graham, Steph Curry, maybe Jaden McDaniels, Andy Wiggins, maybe Evan Fournier, D'Angelo Russell, Pascal Siakam if he plays, and Goose, Anthony Edwards. All right, that will do it for today's show. Don't forget, follow me. Well, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. While on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.